Uh, welcome back. Uh, in this example, uh, example number nine, we're looking at trying to define what is the area that is connected or in between the values that are uh, represented by these two functions, r equals six and r equals three cosecant theta. Okay, uh, so it tells us that it's a circle, but you could graph it and find out for sure. Uh, so this is a circle that looks roughly like that. And uh, then we have uh, a graph that looks sort of like that. And so we're looking at um, this kind of region right here. So what we're looking for are what are these angle values here uh, for our limits of integration? Okay, so that's the first trick. And how do we find those? Well, just like we did back in Calc 1, or Calc 2 maybe, uh, we're going to set these two functions equal to each other. We're going to get 6 is equal to 3 cosecant theta, okay? And solving uh, for, for theta, you're going to quickly find that the sine of theta is equal to 1 half. And just like we did before, um, if you think about, you could draw it right here. Okay, um, when is sine equal, when is sine positive? Well, sine is the y values. Uh, and that's in quadrant one and quadrant two, which is perfectly incongruent or uh, in connection with what we were seeing here with our graph. Uh, and so we're looking for this value and this value here. All right. So if you think of the ordered pairs like I did before, that sine is the y coordinate. And so a uh, sine being a half, that's going to be the smaller of the two. So that would be this one down here. And that means that this reference angle here is pi over six. So the lower limit of integration will be pi over six. And the upper limit of integration would be, well, just like we did before, if this whole thing is pi, okay, then how much do we go back? Well, we go back pi over six. Okay, so that's how we have to go back. And so this will be our second angle. Uh, our second angle, sorry. Yeah, I guess our second angle in our second limit of integration. So this would be what we call alpha or beta, and this is what we call alpha here. So those are our, our two limits of integration. Um, so now we have that figured out, okay? We can go ahead and look at uh, the upper radius minus the lower radius, okay? So the circle is the upper radius for this region between these two values. So this is r equals six. Uh, so that's going to be the upper radius. That'll be our R2. And we're going to subtract from that then the, this line here. Let's go on. So that's what become our R1. Okay. All right. So then A is equal to a one half, the integral from alpha to beta. So pi over 6 to pi minus pi over 6. That's one pi over 6 in case you're wondering. But I like to write it in that constructive form. I think it helps me to understand like where it's coming from or why it's that. Uh, so we're going to have R2 squared, 36, which is 6 squared, minus the uh, R1 squared, which is going to give me 9 cosecant squared theta uh, d theta. Mm -hmm. All right, so there is our uh, formula. Uh, and now we need to integrate this. To do that, we'll jump over to GeoGebra and integrate there. Uh, and if we do that, we get that this is 1 half times uh, 24 pi minus 18 square roots of 3, okay. uh, which if which is the exact answer. And if we simplify this or get a numerical value, um, it turns out to be about 22.1. And some other stuff. Um, Twenty-two point one, and this is in uh, square units. I guess I should have mentioned that in the other columns too. Huh? Um, so that's the that's the end result for that problem. So I hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next video.